Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and once upon a time, I built a colony on Mars with little creatures, little humans, and little robots running around building up the new society. This was the result, and it was actually pretty effective, but eventually I kind of gave up and um, mostly achieved all of my goals and moved on with my life. This is actually using Surviving Mars, the game from Paradox Interactive, who is still not sponsoring this video. Yeah. It's a great game nevertheless, and I do recommend that you at least give it a try, because it's actually kind of fun. And so here, when I was playing this, one thing that kind of kept bugging me is that... Look at this um, dome right here. It doesn't seem like a very good protection from radiation. And so I actually wanted to calculate, or at least to find out... So, okay, these little guys, men and women, with their children possibly, and other animals that could be here, are they actually in any danger from, let's just say, radiation, from cosmic rays? And in other words, um, how long would it actually take for, let's say, this guy right here, who's slowly walking away from us, to receive um, a relatively deadly um, dose of radiation? And I've also recently been watching uh, Chernobyl, the absolutely incredible show from HBO, who is also not sponsoring this video, but um, the show is just absolutely mind-blowing. In that show, they do describe radiation in various detail, and also talk a lot about fatal doses, but I actually wanted to do this from scratch. So, you may have watched a video I made a few months ago when I actually went on a trip um, to see my father and um, in the airplane I was measuring radiation using the um, little device that I bought from China that's actually super accurate at measuring various doses of radiation, specifically um, gamma radiation, beta radiation. And so this device right here showed me that um, at an altitude of about 11 kilometers, I was actually experiencing somewhere between 15 to 20 times higher radiation than I experienced right here on Earth in my apartment. And I actually confirmed this several times using various devices. And obviously, as you go higher and higher in altitude, it increases even more. Now, there is actually a limit at around 40 kilometers where it reaches the peak. But the thing is, there is other sources of radiation in space and also um, other factors we need to consider. But to start, I really wanted to just quickly explain what exactly is this radiation that we're so scared of. All of this is actually from the NASA document you can find in the description below. But here, you can see that there's a little nudge where the radiation is divided into non-ionizing and ionizing. When you hear about Chernobyl, when you hear about dangerous radiation, it's always the ionizing type. It's the much more highly energetic radiation that can actually um, kick out an electron from your molecules inside your body and make them more positive, thus causing tremendous damage to your body. If you've seen any TV show or movie where this kind of a damage is portrayed, you know that it can be pretty dangerous pretty quickly. Um, what's interesting is that uh, there is actually a limit of a dose of radiation you could receive, um, let's say, within a few seconds or within a few hours, where it actually becomes deadly. And in the TV show Chernobyl, it's described, but it's described in much older units that are no longer used. Today, we mostly use a unit known as Sievert, and in this case, you can see that on my measurement device, um, in an airplane at 11 kilometers, uh, or approximately 33,000 feet, it was displaying something like 4 microsievert per hour. Now, when it comes to the deadly radiation or deadly dose of radiation, and here we're talking about situations like, for example, in Chernobyl, a dose that uh, would totally absolutely kill you within a few hours, maybe a few days, would be approximately 6 to 7 sievert, which is roughly about 2 million times the dose I was receiving right here in the airplane, and at the same time, something like 30 million times more than the dose I'm receiving right here in my apartment. And on top of this, NASA actually has a very specific and very well-defined uh, dosage allowed per astronaut. And according to NASA, a typical 25-year-old male can receive maximum 1.5 sievert, a female about 1 sievert. This is for their entire career, whereas an older person, a 55-year-old astronaut, for example, can receive up to 4 uh, sievert if he's a male and 3 sievert if he's a female. And what's really interesting here is that this is technically half of the lethal dose allowed per person. In other words, NASA has a pretty wide boundary for where it allows astronauts to experience up there in space. Although normally nobody actually reaches even remotely close to that limit. This is basically the upper limit at which point you are forced to retire. But let's go back to our Martian mission. So, okay, so what do we have to worry about here? Well, first of all, Mars doesn't really have much atmosphere. The atmospheric layer here is roughly about 0.6% of the atmosphere of Earth, so it doesn't really protect us much from anything. It does protect us a little bit, but not by much. And because the altitude here really matters, NASA has actually created a kind of a topographic map of the least and most radioactive areas 
on the surface of Mars. And um, what you may notice here is that the lower regions are obviously a lot more protected because they have a lot more uh, atmospheric pressure and atmospheric layer between space and the actual surface. Whereas the higher areas like Olympus Mons, which is the biggest volcano in the solar system, and also Elysium Mons, which is another mountain, they do have a relatively high radiation here, almost double the level of radiation on the surface in these valleys. So some of the best uh, places to colonize Mars for humans, the safest places, would be in Hellas Planitia, or in the northern parts that are actually lower compared to the southern parts that are lifted a little bit. Um, I've explained why in one of the previous videos, but in short, it was actually because of a collision. So some of the lower areas here on Mars would probably be the future of human colony, um, or potentially the areas in the north where there is ice caps, there's actual water, um, and a lot more um, atmospheric layer as well that will protect us from the cosmic rays. And the actual level itself, um, let's just say in... Um, Hellas Planitia right here um, is approximately 20 rem uh, per year, which is equivalent to about 0.2 Sevier per year. And remember, the NASA's defined limit for, let's just say, 55-year-old male astronaut is roughly around 5 Sevier. So let's just say this astronaut went to Mars and decided to stay there. How long could they potentially stay? Well, that's around 25 years before it becomes really dangerous for them. But that's, of course, if they were already there and they have never gone to space, never experienced any radiation from anywhere, which is a little bit unrealistic. And it also ignores a very important factor, our sun. Our sun actually has something called solar cycle that lasts roughly around 11 years and can either create conditions where it's relatively safe to travel and there's almost no um, radiation coming from the sun itself, specifically dangerous radiation, uh, ionizing radiation that is, or it can create conditions that are pretty much deadly. So this is where it gets really interesting. Every 11 years, it becomes really dangerous for us to travel in space, to stay outside of our protective layer of planet Earth, and most importantly, to be on the other planets, because the sun becomes quite active. And these events are usually known as solar maxima, and you can see them right here. This is where the number of sunspots increases dramatically, increasing the magnetic uh, entanglement of the magnetic lines inside our sun, which causes tremendous releases of energy and, of course, ionizing radiation and cosmic rays. However, in 2020, up until about uh, 2022, we're going to be in the solar minimum, which would technically be the best time for us to launch a mission to Mars or to the moon or really anywhere where solar cosmic rays become a problem and where solar radiation can potentially cause serious damage to human tissue. But let's get back on track and try to calculate um, another radiation that's very important for a mission to Mars. The radiation you would experience in the actual transfer from Earth to Mars. This transfer could take up to about six months and um, it's a two-way trip for most humans that want to come back in, um, to Earth eventually. And according to NASA, a single trip in a typical spacecraft from Earth to Mars during the solar minimum would most likely um, produce approximately 0.66 Severe. So, in other words, one-tenth of the radiation before it becomes pretty deadly. And because this is a two-way trip, this would already add up to over one severe just for the actual transfer from Mars to Earth, from Earth to Mars. And according to some of the calculations I found online, during the solar maximum, the numbers would be um, so high that there's a very high chance the person might get a lethal dose of radiation of about 11 severe by the time they get to Mars. So that's sort of out of the question. You definitely have to go during the solar minimum. And luckily for us, NASA has already done all of this calculation based on the radiation measurements from the Curiosity rover. And what they discovered is that, well, a 180-day transit to Mars would probably give you about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 uh, severe radiation. But at the same time, because of the Martian atmosphere, um, 500 days on Mars would also give you about the same. So you could technically stay on Mars for practically two years and receive just as much radiation as you would from um, traveling to Mars. So in other words, um, a 500-day long mission to Mars with two transfers would roughly give each of these people living here on, in my Martian colony approximately two severe of radiation in total. And that's after about two years of life here. Now, if they stay longer, then it sort of becomes a problem. But even with two severe received, it's already kind of pretty dangerous. It does increase the risks for developing some serious problems. And at the same time, it also could potentially leave them unable to produce any children as well. So that's actually a bit of a problem here. 
Um, now, when you look at the actual age of astronauts, in this table here, you can kind of see that um, NASA would most likely not allow anyone under the age of 35 and possibly even 45 to go to Mars, simply because of the radiation they'll be receiving. No one in the 25 year old range would probably be going to Mars at all, simply because the radiation they'll receive will be really dangerous to them and will most likely result in a miserable life afterwards. So there's a huge chance that most of the astronauts going to Mars are going to be in their 40s, possibly 50s, and also very experienced pilots, engineers, and doctors. So that kind of determines who's going to be going to Mars. Now, there are obviously different ways for us to improve this colony and to make it more protective and also more safe to live in. And one of those ways maybe could be by building something inside the actual Martian crust, so basically underneath Mars. The other way would be to use um, very uniquely designed structures, which unfortunately I don't think I have here, but it would be structures that would be multi-layered, kind of similar to what I've briefly talked about in one of the recent videos about the uh, startup known as AI Space Factory that was able to 3D print this really beautiful design that will have um, several layers with an area in between that will most likely protect the astronauts inside from a lot of um, cosmic radiation. At the same time, obviously building in the lower areas of Mars or potentially even um, behind, let's just say, a hill or a mountain or inside a cave would definitely protect them from huge amounts of radiation. While, unfortunately, building something like this that's simply protected by glass would be pretty dangerous. Now, if you were to stand on the surface right here, you would receive approximately 30 to possibly 50 times higher radiation than you do right now in your apartment or in your house. So in other words, it's actually only about double of what you receive up there in the airplane. But remember, this is during a solar minimum or during uh, the time when the sun is not super active. When the sun becomes a lot more active, things get more deadly pretty quickly. And so in summary, with the radiation levels of roughly around 30 to 50 times higher than on the surface of our planet, and also combine that with the dose of radiation you receive on the way to Mars and also on the way back to Earth, the entire mission does produce relatively dangerous levels of radiation, suggesting that anything over two years would become pretty deadly pretty quick. Spending more than 25 years on the surface of this beautiful planet might be basically a suicide, and um, unless we create some kind of a shield and some kind of a protection or technology that will protect us from the cosmic rays, both from space and from the sun, we're going to have trouble settling this planet long term. And roughly speaking, um, in only about a year of your life here on Mars, you would receive just as much radiation as you receive on Earth in approximately 100 years. So it does pose a pretty serious problem for future astronauts. And well, honestly, that's it for the Martian mission. Check out the lunar mission as well that um, mentions some of the radiation hazards there. And also, of course, how much radiation you would receive by living on the moon. But when it comes to Mars and the mission to Mars, that's pretty much it. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like this, subscribe, and potentially share this with someone who loves Mars and wants to learn more about space and sciences. Also, maybe potentially support this channel on Patreon or by purchasing Surviving Mars using the link in the description below. It's an affiliate link, so basically I think I make like a few dollars from it or something. And by the way, this costs you nothing. I think Amazon actually pays me from the purchase of the price. Now, anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't, and I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.